Hey, welcome back to another edition of Ego on Break. I'm your host, Dynamite J. Andrews. You got the Mississippi Madman, uh, Logan Creed, sitting to my left. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk a little wrestling. Uh, I guess one of the biggest news is uh, the passing of Dynamite Kid. Yep. Uh, and uh, the passing of Larry the Axe Heening. Yeah. Yep. So uh, condolences to their families. And uh, you got any thoughts the only thing i can really remember about larry the x handy i know i saw a few of his matches but there was a match i saw of him in perfect tagging mm -hmm. and that was one of the matches that stuck out in my yeah. head now as far as who the hell they were tagging i couldn't tell you i don't know if i've ever seen any of his matches it was a uh, awa i yeah. believe yeah that mean that would been the only place yeah. it would happen that but, i mean i just i remember that match and i just remember how big the guy he was because yeah. he was actually way bigger than perfect mm -hmm. was and I mean, I hate it for him, but, I mean, uh... Something we all got to look forward to. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. Can't escape death. Yeah. And then, uh, as far as down to my kid goes, like, I just remember him and, uh, where's something in Japan. Yeah. I don't remember a lot of his WWF stuff. I really don't. And see, that's probably what I know the most of, is the WWE stuff. Uh, obviously, uh, the namesake of Dynamite J. Andrews yeah. comes from him. Um, I just liked his, uh... His style, his presence. Obviously, I did not do anything to try to look like him, <laughs> except go bald. Yeah, so uh, that was as close as I could get. That's age. But uh, you know, like you know, between him and then you know Chris Benoit, mm -hmm. like both are guys that I really liked, and uh, so I guess that was my way of few plus uh, at the time that I gave myself the uh, the dynamite name, uh, formed a tag team with the Renegade Joey Abel, known as the Fanatics. And uh, he was the renegade who was a former wrestler, so I needed something to go with Jay Andrews yeah. that was a former wrestler, and Dynamite just kind of fit. So <laughs> um, um, that's kind of how all that happened. But, yeah, definitely condolences to their, to their uh, family. And uh, well, So if you if nobody's ever seen Dynamite Kid, go watch him and Tiger Mask. Yeah. Or go watch Bruce Bulldogs vs. Heart Foundation yeah. WWF, like old WWF, like, you know, from the right. 80s or whatever. Uh, really, really good stuff. But like him and Tiger Mask were like innovative of what cruiser right. rate is now. Right. You know. They did stuff that people are still stealing ever today. Done. Exactly. Yeah. Now it's basically a pretty much a basic match for today's cruiser weights is what they were innovating back then. Yeah. So and uh, that way. But. while we're on kind of a down subject, uh Rex Bacchus, we had talked about him a few times on here before, uh battling with a severe uh form of cancer I think it's affecting his liver um, they have pretty much trying to send him to hospice right now mm -hmm. um, just said hey go chill out and wait to die uh, he's definitely trying to fight it he said he's found some places in Mexico that's doing some experimental stuff the only thing is that stuff you know costs somewhere you know seven to ten thousand a week um, and there's a PayPal set up so if anybody would like to donate to Rex um, just look at Rex Bacchus uh, look up Jay Andrews. I've shared it, and uh, several people are sharing it. Uh, his PayPal information, and uh, help a guy out if you got it. You know, if you don't have it, share it. You know, I mean, a share goes a long way. Yeah. So uh, to to get the word out, and let's let's see if we can help this guy fight to uh, live. Never so, know what might might work or might not. Absolutely. So uh, definitely prayers with Rex and uh, families of those that have lost loved ones. Um, no real good way to transition no, from that. No, it really wasn't, but, but I was uh, wondering, I'd kind of like to get that out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. Know? So, uh, with, with, you know, I guess with Rex being in the biggest fight, uh, of his life, of his career, uh, we last saw him on MLW. Let's talk about MLW. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, it was, uh, this week was Jason Cade versus Teddy Hart. Right. What what was your thoughts? Because I have some very interesting thoughts on that match. I enjoyed it because I've never really have seen but like two Teddy Hart matches, mm -hmm. and most of them were tag. I've never seen Teddy in a single, so it gave me a more innovative look at what Teddy Hart could do. Yeah, uh, from an athletic standpoint, I think both guys should, like stood out. Yeah, because uh, from it wasn't a, a job match. No, from a. Um, Let's go out and just, you do some cool moves, then I'll do some cool moves, yeah. then you do some cool moves, I'll do some cool moves, was there. Um, what I took away from it, a lot of those cool moves didn't have the 
They didn't get the reaction from the crowd that I think they were going for. They did and, so many. Well, that and they were both heels. Yeah. You know, when you take this big bump and, oh, my God, he kicked out the last second, that really doesn't work when the crowd hates both of you. Yeah. You know? And I thought Teddy worked more as a face than <clears> yeah. a lot of So uh, that was my biggest thing was, like, I hate baby versus baby and heel versus heel. I think baby versus baby can work with the right story better. behind it. Uh, but heel versus heel is very hard when you're trying to get reactions, you know, because who are they gonna gonna cheer? If they cheer you, then you're not being a heel, you know? Um, so there's really a no-win situation, you know, with a baby, you know, one baby can be aggressive and then put the guy over at the end, but a bad guy can't go, oh, he cheated real well, I like him, y'all should too at the end. Like, you can't do that where you can do it from a baby versus a baby match. So the biggest thing, I was like, phenomenal match, but how better would that match have been if just one guy would have been a good guy one back? Well, here lately, if you watch the show a little bit, they had been kind of pushing Teddy kind of as a face because he actually come out and stopped Pillman from kicking the hell out of Teddy. Yeah. He's like, okay, that's enough. He didn't exactly right, stop him. Right, but they are a heel fashion. Yeah, you know? but he calmed him down. Like so he's facing Pentagon he's, at the next yeah, event, you so know, it, so. It's, it's kind of a weird where they're booking him right now. Yeah, so. well, I, they know that nobody gives a crap. All they want to do is see Teddy do stupid stuff. Awesome. Um, so it doesn't matter. And, I mean, that's literally how it, they go about it, you know. Well, the next match was kind of the same thing because yep. to me there wasn't a heel or a face. Yeah, I think Ace Romero was, was supposed to be the heel. It didn't come off like that because the crowd right. chanted for both of them. Right, and the announcers put kind of put both guys yeah. over. And so. I really did, but uh, Ace and Marco stunt. Yeah, yeah. what'd you think? AC Baby. AC Baby. Uh, this is the match I told you I saw on okay. fan cam. But oh, I enjoyed it more with commentary, yeah. honestly. I guess like some commentary is needed, and this one really didn't need it either way, but I enjoyed it more right. just because hearing Tony Schiavone talk about these two guys was freaking awesome. Yeah. It was cool just to see, uh, I think the coolest thing for me was just when he, Ace hit the drop kick. Like, yeah, big old big day yeah. doing the set out drop kick. Yeah, like nobody expected it. First move, wasn't it? Right, yeah, first move he did for sure. Uh, oh. Marco still has a long way discovering how to be a little guy i think he's struggled with trying to be a big guy now he's got to figure out how to be the little guy well, you gotta realize down here he worked against some ladies well that's what i'm saying but you know like the first thing he he does is go behind and tries to like pick like, him up well i'm like a comedy spot right clearly. but the thing is if ace romero would have had gas marco would have had a haircut <laughs> you know what i mean like I, it, to me it takes away from it because why would you do that? Because it was a comedy spot. Yeah, but still, I mean, that's exactly. He couldn't even reach around the dude. Right. It Me and Daryl sitting there watching that. I was like, he can't reach. If it. they were going for funny, then Romero should have butt bumped him in the face. You know, he should have just, just supposed bam. to be in the general. You're too stupid to realize you can't pick me. And up. that's my point. Like, don't be so stupid. I used like, to have guys do that with me. They would try to body slam me, and I would sit there and look at them. Then I'd body slam them. Yeah, but chances were they didn't come up to your kneecap. No, that's true too. You that's know. True. Um, at one point trying to body slam Romero yeah which is so dumb like to me it's the comedy crap you like the comedy shit I like the comedy when it's funny no that. I like comedy when it's funny that's hilarious that's that's not funny like well he tries to do suplexes it just it's like his man, version just, of comedy you don't like his version of comedy that maybe that's what it is it, it but you don't like a lot of Colt Cabana's versions of comedy I, I like Colt Cabana when he's not trying to make you laugh Exactly, and that's the point. You're yeah. missing his point of comedy. If 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 you have to go out of the way to be funny, it's like Hurricane used to try to go for the choke slam and never hit it, <clears throat> and then when he hit it, it meant nothing. Right, but he wasn't teeny tiny. Like, I know, but it was kind Mar of the same Marco. Scenario. I think Marco's stuff could be better had he, if he would just take a little bit of realism to it. You know, I always thought the worst thing Hurricane did was hit the choke slam. Really? Yeah, because on a normal size guy, like if he'd hit it on a cruiserweight guy, fine. But if he, when he choke slammed the rock, I'm like, yeah. come on, dude. Well, he got hurry strength. Yeah, and he won. So, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> All right, what was next? Uh, they called him Roosh. Roosh. Even though it's spelled Rush. But it's Roosh. And uh, Sam Guevara? Sammy Guevara. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because my PM was going out there. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed the match. I, I'd never seen Roosh. I have now because I went out and watched a bunch of stuff with him in uh, L.A. Park. Mm -hmm. And them two crazy dudes try to kill each other in matches. I recommend anybody go watch it. You might understand Mexican wrestling better than I do, <laughs> but son, they just try to murder each other. Yeah, the match was definitely 
Lucha Libre at its best. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, a lot, lot of high spots, a lot of, you know, reverses and counters and go-behinds and flips and misses and, you know, some dives. Sammy did a phenomenal dive. I don't even know how to call it, but. I didn't. Yeah, it was, it's flippy dippies for me. Yeah, Tony Schiavone said twisting, flipping, corkscrewy, suicide. Yeah, I agreed with him. So, <laughs> but it was very cool, like, uh, to see. Uh, it was very unique. So I really dug that. It was one of the better cruiserweight style matches I've seen in a long time, honestly. Yeah. Um, the and, uh, I think the the other thing that takes away from guys doing a ton of stuff is Sammy Guevara got beat by a pile driver. Yeah. Um, Teddy King hit Jason K Kincaid with a Teddy Hart. You mean? Yeah, Teddy Hart. Who did I say? King. My bad. Shout out to Teddy King. Uh, Kentucky's most valuable player. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Teddy Hart, you know, and he even did it to where he couldn't protect himself. Like, he did arm bar, he arm barred both mm -hmm. arms and did it. Kincaid put his foot on the rope. So, he, you know, in a way he sold it. But then, less than six seconds later, he's doing offense. So, I'm like, so you know, either either now, either huh? Teddy can't give uh, power drives worth the, worth the crap. Or you know Jason Kincaid or Jason Cade is like the got the world's strongest neck. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. I see people kick at him all the time now. <clears throat> I think power drivers bother me because it gets the most legit reaction from the crowd. And then everybody and then everybody nobody kicks at him. Yeah. So like so so some moves have to be protected. You know, super yeah, kicks. Not not nah, no not so much. You can kick a dude in the face, but you're not power driving everybody. You know, like power drivers new DDT. I think it's worse. I think it's like the new <laughs> hip toss. <laughs> but anyway, you that's to people. that's me being yeah. old school. <sighs> that's what but, I get for growing up in the seventies. Yeah, sorry, but uh, I mean, I, I thought the show itself was an awesome yeah. show. I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I liked it. So, and uh, what did you think about the backstage segment with uh, Conan? Supposedly, he in the teeth with a. A sock and a lock. Yeah. I, I dig it because it helps put Conan over. I hated it because they were all running scared at the end. And this dude can't even run. Yeah, I'm like, just walk, speed walk. Yeah. I mean, we, <laughs> you know. Um, right. To me, it hurt Loki a little bit that he was so terrified of. To me, it comes off more comedy than serious. Absolutely. I agree. I, so, agree I, I don't mean to knock Conan, but it's just a fact. I yeah. mean, crap, dude. Well, I mean, two two weeks ago he was like, "I'm an old decrepit man. I couldn't do nothing to you." And he was like, "But I did know. think it was cool that he had to use a weapon." <clears throat> right. I mean, at least that part made sense. And I just, then you had. Uh, I'm sorry, a six year old dude with a rock and a sock. I'm not really scared of, yeah. but shotgun maybe. Maybe not, yeah, not but this, he's got a sock with a rock in it. Okay. But, uh, he may hit me once, but I'm gonna smoke him the second time. You know. And then. Uh, as they're leaving in the truck, uh, filthy, dirty, yeah, nasty, filthy. whatever the hell his name is, <laughs> he took off chasing the truck like a dog. <laughs> I dig the Simon Some of Gotch it was betrayal. good, but some of it was yeah. just funny as hell. I, I dig the like, Simon Gotch betrayal. I dig yeah. even more that uh, another member of Team Filthy, Fred Yeha, is coming back and going to take on Loki at the next event. Yeah, I saw that. I so, uh, we've, we've used the uh, yeah. yeah. I dig that yeah. just because he's a oh. uh, ego alumni. Yeah. So uh, way to go, Fred. <laughs> Hope you wear your pajamas uh, on TV. The other show I wanted to talk about, and I only really want to talk about one match because the rest of it just didn't matter to me. All right. But uh, the NXT show, it was Matt Riddle versus the debuting Punishment, Punishment Martinez. Okay. And uh, Riddle won, but they, they used to be tag part. I didn't know that. And I, I didn't either at the time. But they talked about it at the show, and then I did a little research after, and they did for a little while. Mm -hmm. They were tag partners. Where at? But, uh, I don't remember. Okay. I'll have to look it up again. But uh, uh, Matt Riddle actually won with a weird ass. I don't know. He was turning his damn neck around his arm. It was odd. Some type of cross yeah, face type Some thing. kind of side cross face. Yeah. It's kind of how it was. But uh, I thought it was weird for the guy to debut and lose. Well, they do that a lot, though. But Punch Punch is one of those big, huge yeah. guys. You know what I mean? And but I'm again, like, that I know makes they had Riddle, jobber number you know? 75 in the back of Kudlow. Right. Lost. But that makes Riddle by beating yeah. this. And they had a great match, Big hyped guy. So, I mean, it was I like, don't hate that at all. Especially if it was, you know, if it wasn't 
if punishment come out looking good too, you know. About ten minute match, but yeah. I mean they had a good match. Uh, well, other than losing, what do you think of the match for punishment? Did it make him? Oh no, both of them. That's why I say that yeah. neither one looked like crap by any means. Right. If anything, it could be the start of a feud. Yeah. And then at the end, <laughs> after the match, uh, Hero come out with a riddle back to him and knocked the hell out of him with the elbow and knocked him off the stage. Yeah, that's cool. So I mean, I know it's where they're going as Hero Riddle because yeah. they already did. Riddle knocked him out in like three seconds yeah. for his first ever match. So well, in the words of uh, Jim Sterling saw this on Twitter, uh, an Ego fan was upset with how uh, he was involved in matches over the weekend at Holiday Horrors, and he said, maybe you don't understand how wrestling works. There has to be a winner, there has to be a loser, and you're mad because we were the winner. So, you know, Funny how I, I don't something. think it was bad that Punishment's debut, he lost. Oh, no, I don't know. either. I just, um, I just wonder because how Because at the end of the day, he had to, somebody had to. I've just know. never seen a debut and somebody lose. Ray Mysterio. Raymond Came Sarah. in, psh, got beat right off the bat. Where at? Raw? SmackDown? Yeah, well, wherever. WWE. His first match ever was SmackDown on with Chavo, and he beat Chavo. Mm -mm, yes, think, maybe it was his pay per view Chavo. debut then. Okay, I was going to say on SmackDown, he beat Chavo. <clears throat> the reason I know this because uh, Conrad and Bruce uh, on something to rest with, Conrad made a big, how how can you just, is his debut or maybe his debut right, pay per view or whatever. pay per view because he beat Chavo in but, the first uh, ever match. He, you know, you have him get beat and he's like, hey, somebody had to get beat. <laughs> Everybody can't be winners. But like I said, there's always jobber yeah. number 75 in the back. He could have lost. Yeah, who, you don't like squash matches. Well, I, I don't exactly <laughs> want to see a, a brand new guy get jobbed out. Well, he didn't get jobbed. He got yeah, exactly. beat. It's a difference. Exactly. I mean, it, But it's, then again, he did tap out in the middle of the ring, too. But, so. Yeah, to a legit guy, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It it's not. On who it's it not is. like if he'd have lost a job or seventy five, yeah, that would have been a problem. Right. That's what we're, It's uh, not like guy in a t shirt and a you know e lucha mask come out there and made him tap out. Like he got tapped. Like it's like, oh, Brock made some job. Some I'm not Brock's legit. Brock, if he step to him and see if you don't yeah. get jobbed out. You know what I mean? Well, like, saw what happened to Mike Carter. Yeah. You never saw his face. I mean, riddles a riddles a BMF. You know, like. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in the real world, if he wanted you to tap, chances are you'd tap. Now, he may be bloody and beaten and got a broke leg, but he could probably make you tap if you wanted to. The dude comes to the ring and his flip-flops. He jumps over the ring, lands with his flip-flops, and kicks both his flip-flops off. I was like, what the? Did, I think I told you a story about uh, oh, Triple H looking flops, at him or whatever. Yeah. Gotta have my flops. I was like, what the hell? Bro, gotta have my flops. King of the bros. <laughs> Like, I don't get the gimmick, but hey, he's a good worker. His whole right? gimmick is, bro. Yeah, I know. I know. He's basically <laughs> the guy from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah, he's, he's what Rob Van Dam wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, they would let Rob get a pro man. Yeah, bro. So, you know. <coughs> so, uh, what's your thoughts of Holiday Horrors? I any, enjoyed the Anything show. you, uh, um, let's get the Madman uh, star rating on, on the, uh, what was the best match? If I could have saw all of JD's because it went so so far around the show, I yeah. probably would have enjoyed it the most. But because I couldn't see it all because where I was, I would actually give the, the match of the night to Abel and uh, Ursa Major. Ursa Major. Joey Abel, Ursa Major. I, I honestly enjoyed that. Uh, probably the match the most. Wow. And, I dig uh, it. I, I told both of them that upstairs, and you know, I was just like, I was, it really, it really impressed me. Yeah. What's your What's your thoughts on? Uh, Britt Jackson, uh, the Nightmare, and Bristol Hale. Like, I enjoy, I like the six man. I really do. The uh, it was it was a force teaming. Yeah. Um, by General Manager Chuck McMullen, he uh, forced Britt Jackson, Nightmare, and Bristol to team up against um, Scott Morgan, uh, Sean Christopher, and Oblivion. If anything, well, they were getting punished. Yeah. <laughs> True. Um, but I, I, it was a unique pairing for sure. But it was interesting after the you know Britt Jackson won the match, and then he presented the lifeless body to the White Widow just yeah. like Nightmare had done. So uh, makes you wonder is White Widow assembling some type of you know monster army? Because uh, crazy ass damn factions forming an ego. That's what I'm saying. I mean, who's gonna step up? That's that's the thing. You know, well, we got the constellation, then we got uh. You know, this with the White Widow, uh, Bristol Hale, and the Nightmare, and now the Mauler, Britt Jackson, like... And then, um, 
What's his name? O'Hagan showed up looking like he come off Dark City because he had the robe on yeah. and the bald head. And <clears throat> you ever seen the movie Dark City where yeah. they're flying around? Okay, you're but I saw uh, Sturdust come in and reveal itself to be Sterling, Sterling. Uh, and with complete facial bandages. And Dark Man. Uh, is that what it is? What it looks like. Okay. You ever seen the movie Dark I Man? You'd it. understand. He understood. Yeah. So, uh, Dark Man Sterling and that's what I said. Dark City, <laughs> Dark City, and he's got, a, he's got a monster hut over there. So, I'm like, So, uh, you got some freaks hanging out up to the damn, um, ego. You know, the thing is, there's a lot of guys they have to step to. You got JD Jenkins, and you've got you know, Ray Fury and Wes Warren and Joey Abel. You got the debuting Sean Christopher, who I was really impressed with, even though he didn't fare very well with. Uh, Bristol Hale. Uh, no. uh, he did win by DQ. Um, um, so I guess uh, it kind of counts. Yeah, it kind of counts. He, he didn't. He didn't get he jobbed out. Well, I mean, but then he got the hell beat out. Well, I mean, he didn't get jobbed out. He won the match. Right. I mean, that's getting clearly up, how it works. Getting beat up after didn't matter <laughs> at all. And then had to work a six-man uh, tag. You know, yeah. got uh, got Oblivion, who is uh, unorthodox to say the least. So <laughs> I saw the bus drop him all up. <laughs> It wasn't from a superhero high, was no. it? Disturbed high, I believe. Nah, I got you. <laughs> but, then, uh, uh, what was the very first match? The guy that wrestled uh, Riot for Charles the Charles Anders. I uh, actually liked that match a lot. Yeah, that match was really good. Uh, Charles Anders took the best VIP Riot. match you've had ever. In a, well, yes, I, I'd say in a ever, while, for sure. Ever. I don't know. We've had... Ever. Uh, we had, a, we had a, a triple threat one time that was pretty good. I'm still going back. So, uh, Riot coming back. We haven't seen Riot in a while. I read this morning that was the first time <coughs> he had hit in six years. Yeah. Coming back, you know, a little over 60 pounds lighter 60 than when we last water. saw him. So, I don't know what they've been feeding him in, in the wasteland, but Not uh, much. it hadn't been very much. He's snagging on bones. I mean, he may have been in prison or something. Yeah, or, eating bone marrow. Yeah, it could be like uh, was the Lion King and they got the hyenas and they're all mm -hmm. like fighting over one little scrap. That's probably what it is in the wasteland. All the members of Days of Rage just fighting over, like, leftover. That's it. I've tagged with a guy. <clears throat> so, uh, it was, it was, it was a cool event. Uh, the crowd wasn't there, um, you know, which, you know, we kind of had expected well, with the time I mean. changes, um, and, you know, that type of thing. But overall, I mean, I, I thought a lot of things happened at this show. This, uh, it this was event. a fun show. I, I, yeah. There was nothing about it I didn't like. Yeah. Um, JD and Donnie Primetime went uh, everywhere. Donnie came out and tried to goad uh, JD into a street fight. False count anywhere. False count anywhere. Um, so that he could uh, showcase Prime Jitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if he showcased it or not, but. Uh, Didn't beat up all around the bars that count? Yeah, he goaded uh, JD into a hideaway rules, is what JD called it, where there mm -hmm. are no rules. And it was, uh, <laughs> it was a weird. It was a fight. Um, I know uh, at one time JD went to the bar and said, "Bartender, give me something. My opponent's thirsty." And uh, tried to pour the the uh, drink down uh, Donnie's throat. Wow. Um, I, I, I assume it wasn't Donnie's uh, flavor because he spit it back in JD's face. So that's smart. Um, at one point, Donnie decided he was going to play cameraman as he grabbed the camera and decided to uh, film yeah, himself you. kicking JD. You say he's been advertising as a cameraman since. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, I don't know if he was, you know, trying to uh, audition to be Duke the Dumpster Drosy's uh, sidekick. But for a while, Donnie spent a little bit of time in a trash can. Sure. Uh, until he had to look these calves, which I'm not sure how I can look through the garbage can, but I, he definitely felt the calves as JD kicked him in the head. I wouldn't want to have been in the smell of that trash can. No, nah, probably not me neither. So uh, tossing to the trash can yeah. head first. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> Only at Pro Wrestling Ego, you know. Yeah, I've seen it in other places too. <laughs> nah, you still, you nah, wonder nah, at the same nah. point, you're like, what the hell am I watching? Never seen a guy get hip tossed into a garbage can anywhere else. They may have got put into the no, garbage can. I was hip tossed. It was one of the times I've seen the same thing, but it's been a long time, actually. Yeah, that promotion don't matter. So, uh, all in all, it was a good time at the Hideaway. Yeah. Um, definitely uh, lived up to the name because we saw the uh, the pairing of 
The horrors? Yeah, the horrors. <laughs> Her horrors. <laughs> uh, hey, whatever, it worked. <laughs> the, the White Did you Widow's see the pictures that, uh, John Paul took of? I saw a couple. Um, he took uh, three good ones, I saw. Yeah, we had uh, Four Corners Photography and Mark Out, mem uh, mark out Moments. Media. Media? Mark Out Media? Mark Out Moments. It was Media Moments or yeah. something. Yeah, anyway. Know. We had we had two uh, photographers. No, this was uh, oh that that's was. body okay, slam media. Yeah, we had a lot of media. We had a lot of uh, participation. Exactly. Uh, house show was there. Um, body slam media was there. Mark out moments was there. Four corners photography was there. Um, a lot of people wanting to see what was going on at Pro Wrestling Ego. So uh, a lot of video out there. There is a lot of video out there. And um, go check it out. Go watch it. Give us feedback. Um, I want to do something different for next week. I want to pick a to pick a topic, whether it's a uh, something to watch. Uh, that, you know, we talk about just that, or if it's a character, or something like that. So, guys, um, let us know in the comments what you like to like for us to talk about. Give us some topics. A little uh, whose line is it anyway? You know, we're, we're taking uh, comments from the crowd. So, uh, comment down below if you want to see if you want to hear us talk about something in particular. And uh, we'll try to find it and watch it. Um, if not, I guess we'll make something up if you guys don't give us something. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. So uh, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Comment, thumbs up, ring the bell. Uh, anything you can do to help you this get views. Uh, you know, check us out on all the social media. Fullygimmick.com. You can get Pro Wrestling Ego merchandise. They've got t-shirts and coloring books and uh many 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 other things so uh, until next week mary what up doesn't offend you on christmas too yeah some of that later guys